Oh, well, welcome back. Welcome back. You have gathered up your tools for our painting today. So you have a paper towel or a napkin. I'm gonna have you fold that. And you're gonna place it off to the side for now and put your paintbrush on top. You should have either a cup or a bowl of water. You're gonna place that off to the side. We won't need that for a little while. You've got a cup of crayons or a box of crayons and a cup of markers. You made sure that those markers are a water-based marker like Crayola or Rose Art. Uh, they are not Sharpie markers, which are permanent markers. You're gonna put those off to the side. Now the paper uh, is your choice. If you have just copy paper that's coming out of your printer and that is all that you have at home to work with, don't worry, it's gonna turn out great. This is my picture that I did, my very first picture when I was kind of playing around. And I did this just out of the paper that came out of my printer. As you can see, it's kind of thin and it does wrinkle up. If you have con uh, construction paper, that works wonderful. If you have watercolor paper, that's even better. So I'm gonna be using watercolor paper because I happen to have some. If you don't, as I mentioned earlier, your picture is gonna be great. All you have to do is just press it under a book when you are done. All right, so let's get ready to start our project. So the first thing that we're going to do is straighten up your uh, paper and make sure that it is horizontal. You're gonna make sure that uh, your water is off to the side. We're not gonna be using that for a little while. And we're going to not be using a pencil today. We're not using a marker. We're gonna actually draw with a crayon. So the color I wanna work with first is yellow. Now in your crayon box, you might have two different yellows to choose from. It doesn't matter to me which one you work with. Uh, the name of the picture is called Olive Trees with Yellow Sun and Sky by Vincent Van Gogh. So we are gonna be using quite a bit of yellow in the sun, the sky, and then also down in the hillside, as well as a little bit into the trunks of the trees. Now for simplifying today, instead of drawing all of the olive trees, we're just going to draw two trees. We're gonna focus on drawing two trees if you like, and you uh, get comfortable doing this project, you can add more later. We're gonna put a hillside in just like he did. We're gonna add a stream. We're gonna add some mountain range in the back and we're gonna add that beautiful glowing sun in the distance. So let's begin. We're gonna start with our yellow crayon. We're gonna find the center of our paper. We don't have to make a dot there. We're actually gonna make a dot a little higher with our crayon. Now it doesn't matter which color. I'm gonna be working with this darker yellow just because you can see it up a little better on camera. And I'm going to draw a small circle about the size of a quarter with my crayon. And nothing today is gonna to be colored in. We're gonna leave a lot of paper. Now Vincent Van Gogh had this fabulous style that was very new and he was uh, inspired by some other artists that were doing this style. And what he did was he made dashes and dots with his paintbrush. So when we are working with our paint, our crayon today, we're gonna to kind of work with it the way Vincent Van Gogh did with his paintbrush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be tapping my crayon to make these little dash marks. I'm gonna throw a couple yellow ones in there. And then I'm gonna make a kind of a dotted line circle around my thumb. When I'm finished, I'm gonna to continue to make a second circle, kind of like a spiral, and a third, and a fourth, and I'm going to stop once I get to four or five times around because I need to save room for the mountain range and the distance and the trees. We can add more later once we kind of build everything else up. But for now, just go up here and draw a few little dashes of yellow while you have this color in your hand. And be thinking about the way you're making those dashes so that it's kind of forming a circle around the center part, which is our golden sun. All right, I'm gonna go back to uh, Van Gogh's painting. And the next thing I'm seeing is a mountain range right here. So we're going to extend that mountain range. Depending on how large you make your two trees, we're going to make that mountain range. And if we end up covering it up, that's fine. But just for now, we're going to just kind of draw kind of 
a bumpy hill. It's going to go up and down. And then I'm going to make a second one look off the edge of the paper. Okay, if you do two or three mountain ranges, you can change it up. You can add little bumps if you want to, to change the shape of it like this if you want to. It doesn't matter. It's all going to be covered up with some crayons and marker later. All right, so we have our hillside now. And the next thing we're going to draw is the horizon line, which is covered up fairly well in this painting. But the, the horizon lines would be the separation between the ground and the sky. So in my picture, because I simplified it, it's only two trees, you can see a horizon line. So I'm just going to take my yellow crayon. And I'm just going to draw a line across the paper, my horizon line. And then the next thing I'm going to do is figure out where I want my streaming to go. So in Van Gogh's painting, he has several different streams running through the olive orchard. And that's because this water is what is nourishing those trees. And that's why those trees are growing along the, along the banks of all of those uh, water waves. We're just going to keep it simple and we're going to do one. Now I want you to notice that the stream is going to be wider toward the bottom of the paper and get more narrow as it travels away. So I'm gonna go over here to the bottom right-hand corner of my paper and on the right-hand side, right about here, I'm gonna make a little dot, a couple fingers up from the bottom. You don't have to measure, just wherever you think is comfortable for you. And I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna trail the direction I want my stream to go off into. Now most of it's gonna end up getting covered up by the trees later. So we're just kind of getting an idea. Do you want your stream to go off into the distance to the middle of the paper or all the way off in the far distance? I'm gonna have mine go off into the far distance. So I'm just gonna kind of make a little wavy line. It goes off into the distance. And then in order to make that stream look like it's actually going far away, we are going to give the illusion of that by making it skinny at the back and wider at the front. So I'm gonna come down here and make a little dot at the bottom of my paper, how wide I want my stream at the bottom. And then I'm going to progressively get thinner and thinner as I go all the way to the left-hand side of my paper. So I'm just gonna go like this, kind of following whatever shape I did up here. I'm gonna get a little bit more narrow and narrow and narrow all the way to the end. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of this is going to end up getting covered up by our trees, especially if you use uh, a lot of brown and make a lot of branches. All right, so after you have finished this portion of your picture, then we're going to go in and we're going to kind of map out where we want our trees to go. So for me, I'm going to do two trees. You could do more. And I really like the way olive trees are really kind of bumpy and they're not real perfect. So sometimes when you draw a tree, you'll do it kind of like this, like the letter Y. But I really like that the olive tree is a little bit more, I don't know, it's more exaggerated. So you really can kind of have fun with the branches and even the trunk is kind of bumpy. So as you can see, I was inspired by his work and I made my tree kind of bending back this direction also, which I think I'm going to do again. So for the first tree, we're going to go over to this side of the paper, and you can decide whether you want your tree going all the way off the bottom of the paper, or you can bring it up just a tiny bit from the bottom. So I'm going to have mine a tiny bit up from the bottom, so I'm going to make a little hill where my tree is going to be coming from. And I'm going to start with just the left-hand side of the tree. So I'm going to curve my tree kind of going up and then by looking at his picture here it bends kind of in and then goes out don't make all these little bumps and curves yet we're just kind of getting the base shape of it how you want the beginning of your tree to look and then i'm going to curve it up to make kind of a wonky branch And then when you're making a branch, it's going to be really skinny at the tip and it's going to get progressively wider as it goes closer to the trunk. We'll finish this later, but let's get the other side of the trunk done first. So we could do a simple tree just like this, a little curve like that. Or you could add kind of that little knot, that little bend in it. 
if you want to. I think I'm going to add that little kind of curvy bend. It almost looks like an elbow. And as I draw this part of the tree, and we'll worry about the other branches later. We're just going to focus on one branch right now. So what I want to do is make sure that this branch gets progressively skinnier as it goes up. So you notice I'm getting closer and closer to that original line until it just becomes a tiny point. And then most of this is going to get covered up by green leaves later, but you can add a few random little branches off to the side. Now I'm going to come back down to this tree and figure out if I want another branch going the other direction. Now I don't want to cover up my sun, so you'll notice in my tree I kind of made my branches just to the left of the sun here. But my tree got so big that it covered up a lot of my mountain in the background. So as I mentioned earlier, you don't really have to worry too much about the mountains because your trees might get so large that they cover a part of your hillside up. So any branch that's growing off the main branch has to be smaller than the main branch. So this branch is this wide. So if I'm going to be making another branch growing off of this branch, it's very important that I always make it thinner than the other branch that it's growing off of. And any small branches that are growing off to the side, they need to be thinner than the branch they're growing from. They can progressively get skinnier and skinnier as you go down. So you can always add another secondary or third branch off this side of your branch. And you'll notice I'm bringing all of my branches that are all kind of traveling up toward the sun. They're not coming back down toward the ground. So most of the time, most trees, the branches are reaching up toward the sun. All right, so that's tree number one. I'm going to move over here and do the same thing on tree number two. Now, if you don't want to do a tree over here, you don't have to, but I am going to add one more tree. So this tree is going to be on the other side of the bank of the stream. That means it's farther away in the distance. So these trees, as you can see in his painting, are slightly smaller than this tree that is closer to us, which is closer to the bottom of the paper. So if I'm going to do a tree here, I want to make sure that that tree is a little bit smaller at the base than this tree because it's farther away in the distance. So I'm going to just kind of make a wonky tree, kind of copying what we did before, adding some skinny little branches, maybe add a little knot in it kind of make it bumped out like I did the first one. Now this branch has to be thinner than this branch. You get the hang of it. Not spending too much time worrying about all these skinny branches. Most of that's all going to get covered up with greenery. Okay, now we are done drawing. This is basically our pencil that we drew with. While we have this yellow crayon in your hand, I want you to go in and make some quick little dashes in your tree. Now, as I'm dashing them, I don't want you to color. You're just kind of scratching it right over the surface of the tree, the trunk of the tree. Next, you're going to take your yellow and you're going to make some dashes in the hillside, this area right here in the front of the stream. Now, we want that to look like a rolling hill so you can see how it's kind of moving. You get the feeling by the way that he painted with his painting strokes that the hillside is moving. There's little dips and grooves in the ground. So you don't want to just be doing random scribbles. You actually want to be dashing your line, kind of following the same path that you drew earlier. Now, you don't have to make perfectly straight lines. You can go over your lines. You're just kind of quickly scratching some lines in, but you'll notice all my lines are heading down this direction. I'm going to match it on the side, on the back side of the stream, but because this is in the distance, I'm going to practice trying to draw these little um, hatch marks a little bit smaller because this is farther away. So I'm tapping with little shorter strokes. We're going to be layering lots of colors into this, so this is not your only color. If you do have a second color of yellow, this would be the time to go in and pull in that other color of yellow and lay that on top. So I have like a lemon yellow, so I can go in now 
and take my lemon yellow, which is a little bit different shade than my golden yellow. And now I can go in and tap some lemon yellow randomly following the pattern that we drew earlier. Filling in spaces in the sky. And I can take that yellow and tap a few little scratch marks into my tree. And then some yellow into the hillside. Now over here, any part of the sky that you think is gonna show that the, maybe the green of the leaves are not gonna show, cover up, you wanna make sure you get some yellow down there too. This is my hillside. If you got confused and you put some yellow dashes in there, don't worry. As you can see, Vincent Van Gogh has lots of different colors in his hillside. It's not just one color. All right, I'm gonna put my yellow away, moving on to an orange. So I've got an orange crayon in my cup. You might have a couple different shades of orange. You might have a regular orange and you might have a red orange. So if you wanna try more than one shade, go for it and you're gonna do the same thing. So first thing I'm gonna do with my orange, I'm gonna start with my lighter shade of orange. I'm gonna trace around my sun to kind of outline it to make it pop. I'm gonna add a few dashes inside the sun and then I'm gonna follow that kind of spiral pattern we were doing before and add some orange. You're going right on top of some of the other colors and in between sometimes as well. Continue that color out into the sky, even though it might get covered up by my green leaves later. Then I'm going to take this orange and I'm going to trace the horizon line. So darken it up. I'm going to trace the side of my stream. That would be called the bank of the stream, where the soil comes down and meets the edge of the water. And then I'm gonna go in with my orange and add some scratch marks of orange. Now, if you have three different shades of orange, go ahead and just scribble those, not scribble, I'm sorry, dash those colors in, in your hillside. I'm not worrying about it being perfect, I'm just kind of playing with it. And then while you have that orange in your hand, dash a couple scratches of orange into your tree. When you're finished with one shade of orange, move on to another shade of orange. I've got a little bit darker orange, so I'm gonna retrace my horizon line. I'm gonna retrace my bank edge of the water where the soil will come down. And then I'm gonna go back in and add this kind of dark orange color, red orange. When I'm finished with that color, I'm gonna add it also to the tree. Ooh, got some in my stream, so might as well add a few more in my stream. What the heck, it's gonna turn out beautiful. Notice he has orange in his stream. He's got peach, he's got gray, he's got silver, he's got blue, he's got purple. You could tell he has fun when he painted. So Vincent Van Gogh sometimes would get so busy with his painting that he would forget to eat and sleep. Now I have never been so excited when I was drawing that I would forget to eat, but he would. He would forget to eat. He would paint sometimes constantly without taking a rest or a nap. And that um, was not very good for his health. And he ended up having some health issues due to this and it wasn't good for his brain. I'm sure your parents tell you all the time you need to rest, you need to go to bed, don't stay up all night playing video games or watching TV. Well, there is a reason our body needs the sleep to rest and heal. And uh, if you are staying up constantly, it's not good for your body. And uh, it wasn't good for him. He also wasn't eating very well. And sometimes he would just chew on his paintbrush and it would have oil-based paint on it which is not good for your body. Your body is not made to eat paint. And that also was not good for his brain. It was um, doing some damage to him. 
All right, from here, we've done all these fun warm colors. We're gonna move on to brown for our tree. And now we're gonna take a brown crayon and we're just gonna outline the edge of our tree. So I'm just going around, kind of retracing the lines I made before. Now you notice when I'm doing this, I am not being perfect. I'm literally just kind of going real quick, following what I drew before. Now, if I can't see a line because it's kind of confusing compared to the sky, just make it up as you go along. Most of it's going to end up getting covered up anyway. Now, when Vincent Van Gogh was younger, he didn't know that he was going to end up being an artist. He didn't end up uh, doing art until he was much older. He was 27 years old when he started to decide that he wanted to be an artist. He tried a lot of other different professions before he became an artist. And that's not normally the way our famous artists um, grow up. Usually they have been an artist ever since they were a child, but he didn't uh, do that. You see how I'm just kind of going in with my brown, scribbling it on my tree and leaving some marks here and there. Now take your brown and retrace your horizon line. And I want you to retrace the edge of your stream. And then you're gonna take your brown and go in and make a few dash marks in your hillside. So at about the age 27, that's when he decided that uh, he was gonna start doing more painting. And one of the people that uh, encouraged him with his painting was his brother, his best friend was his brother, and his name was Theo. And um, he had a really great relationship with his brother. And they uh, stayed very connected throughout their lives. And he would write many letters to Theo. And over his lifetime, they were able to find, just the physical letters they were able to find from Vincent Van Gogh were 653 letters that he wrote to his brother. So I don't know how close you are to your brother, if you have a brother or sister, but um, I have two sons and um, I don't think they've ever written a letter to one another, let alone 653. <laughs> okay, let's move on to now doing our cool color. So we've done all some warm colors. We've got some yellows and oranges in our picture. If you have red, that's one more color. If you wanted to add a little bit of red, I wouldn't put too much in there, but if you want to add a couple little uh, dashes of red with a crayon, you can do that as well. Um, but I want to move on to some cool colors. So cool colors, when you think about cool colors, these are the colors that you think about when you think about the water or the ocean. So any kind of blue would be beautiful. If you've got blue, any kind of green. Another pretty uh, color is lavender or purple. I see that he has some lavender and purple in some areas of his picture. So if you have any of those colors in your crayon box, we're gonna start to put these into our stream. So we're gonna outline our stream. Choose one of the colors, blue or purple, green, it's up to you. I'm gonna outline the stream. And I'm gonna start going in and making some dashes of this new color. So we're going to start adding some cooler colors. Our warm colors are colors that you think of in the sun, red, orange, yellow, or in the fire. The cooler colors are blues and greens. You think about if it's a hot day and you had bare feet, you would want to go hurry, hurry, hurry and get over to the grass to put your feet on that cool grass. That's a good way to remember that grass green is a cool color. I'm going to put a little bit of green in the water. And then let's look at that mountain in the background. So in our mountain, we also use cool colors in the mountain. I see some blue in there and I see some purple. So if you have blue or purple, I'm going to go in and outline your mountain. And do you notice that in his picture, he has areas of space where it's a little bit darker. So when you look at this painting from far away, it almost looks like a shadow on the side of the mountain. So right in there, that's like a little crevice in the mountain. And that's probably would be a place if you were hiking, you would go into that little crevice to catch some shade. So what we're going to do is we're going to darken a few areas 
on only one side of our mountain. So we're gonna go over here to the right side of our mountain and we're just gonna make a little dividing line that comes down like this. Doesn't have to look like mine, just kind of make a little scribble line that goes to the right. And then on this mountain, you can do the same, just some type of little shape that goes off to the side like this. Have a little space right there. You can also add just a little cutout if you want to and make that be a little crevice too. And then you're gonna take your crayon, blue, purple, gray, any of those kind of colors, and you're gonna go in and you're gonna tap your crayon in that shaded area. Now you notice I'm making all of my kind of scratch marks still go the same direction on this side of the mountain. And then I'm gonna take that purple and I'm gonna run that through my water too. I have a little purple on my water. Next, I'm gonna go in with blue and I'm gonna scratch some blue over those purple lines. And in the crevice, and then on the lighter side of the mountain, so I'm gonna bring this picture back, you can see that he has blue on the lighter side. So this time, I'm gonna move my scratch marks going the opposite direction. I'm gonna go this way now. And I'm not gonna put too many, I want it to be a little bit lighter when you look at it. And I don't want them to look perfect. So I'm going to kind of scratch a couple crooked ones in there too. And then when you're finished, we're going to take that blue and that purple crayon and we're going to come back to them a little bit later. Go ahead and pop those back into your Boxer Cup. If you have a gray crayon, you can go in and use gray on the front of your mountain. If your box crayons did not come with gray, don't worry about it. You don't need it. Now the next color after gray, you can put some gray in the water if you want to. The next color in your crayon box you're going to look for is black. So you want to look for black, not the blue green. Where's my black? There we go, that's my black. So you're gonna take your black and we're gonna go in and add just a very light line of black on the right side only of our tree. So look what I'm doing. I'm gonna do the right side of my tree. I'm just kind of scratching it. I'm not making a perfectly hard line. And on the right side of my branch, and then wherever your branch connects two branches together, you're gonna to do kind of both sides like that. See, there's really light line on the edge but a little darker on the right side so I'm going to make it a little bit darker just still kind of scratching it I'm not drawing hard but I'm kind of going like two or three scratches on the right side and maybe one scratch on the left side Now, once you're done with your trees, then you're gonna take your black and you're gonna outline very lightly the horizon line. And then you're gonna outline your mountain. And any of the little cracks and crevice lines that you made, you're gonna outline those also. And then we're gonna go in with our black crayon and just do a few scratches on the shady side of our mountain. Okay, now right here at the very back of the stream, it would be a little darker in the distance, so I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black in my water, not too much. And then I'd like you to take your crayon and very softly trace a few black lines right down the middle of your trunk. Now, if you have a knot in the tree like this, you can make it a little bit darker. You notice I didn't make a big black dot. 
I just kind of scribbled a little bit more to make it a little darker and that kind of hole in the tree. And then your lines where the wood grain is are going to kind of go around the knot. They kind of follow the pattern of the tree. All right, we are done with our crayon now. We're gonna go ahead and put that black crayon back in our cup and we're gonna move on to our markers now. So for our markers, first color we're gonna work with is yellow. Remember we're using a water-based marker, not a permanent marker. That way it will melt later with water. My marker is a slight a bit dirty from using it in my last couple pictures I've been practicing with but it still shows a yellow color. You can always take your marker if it's really dirty and just wipe it on your napkin. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna start picking up a little bit of the crayon that's on your paper. Now you notice I'm gonna hold my, cray my marker on its side so I get a big stroke when I make my little dash marks. I'm basically doing exactly what I did with a crayon, but now I'm just adding in marker to do the same trick. And wherever I put yellow before with my crayon, that's my hillside, my trunks of my tree and my branches, I'm gonna add my yellow marker the same way. I'm not coloring, I'm just kind of scratching it in there. Scratch a little bit into the tree. And then close up your yellow. Now I have one little trick that if you have a white crayon, you can go in and add some highlights to your tree. And what will happen is later when we use the water, the water is going to resist this. It's kind of like, um, like a masking material by using this white crayon. So if you have white, you can go in and draw some hard lines. Now try not to break your white crayon. I always end up breaking mine. But you can draw some hard lines with your white crayon. And especially if you want to put some dashes in the water and later when we color over these, the white will show up once we add the water. This would be a great place to add some white lines on the sunny side of your mountain. And maybe a couple inside your sun. I'll put my white crayon back. Now I'm going to move on to my next color marker and that's orange any shade of orange that your little marker set came with. And if you don't have orange, don't worry because you already have yellow and it looks great with yellow. I'm gonna add a little orange kind of right here around the edge of the sky. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of orange around my sun. Now my orange marker doesn't work really well on the wax crayon, but it does show up a little bit if there's some white paper. So if I've got a few spaces of white paper, I can go in and draw a few dashes with my orange. Another place we used orange was the hillside. So I can go in and dash some orange in my hillside. And you can add a little bit of orange in your tree. So I'm just very gently going in and kind of rubbing the side of my marker so it leaves a little mark of orange. Now I bet you're thinking, wait, I thought we were gonna do a green tree with the leaves. What, when are we gonna add the green? We are, later. After we're done with all of this warm color and when we're done waking it up with paint, we're gonna go back in and that's gonna be our final touch. We're gonna to add that a little bit later. Okay, once you are finished now, with your orange, it's time for us to wake up our crayon and our marker with our paintbrush. So you're gonna look for your paintbrush, you've got your little bucket of water, and you're just going to take your water, place it in front of your napkin, so your napkin is right next to the area where you're gonna be painting. So I'm gonna kind of scooch my paint off a little bit so you can see better. So I'm gonna rinse my brush in, and remember we don't tap our brush on top of the water bowl. We slide it up the side so we don't have any water still. And we're gonna go with the lightest area, which would be our sun, and we're just gonna very softly wake that marker up. So what's gonna happen as we paint, we're just kind of grabbing some scoops of water, and we're just gonna start to wake up the sky. Now I am still quickly painting this, 
and I'm just pulling that water off the edge of my paper onto the surface underneath. Now, if you don't have some paper underneath your picture, you could also take a piece of construction paper and place it underneath your painting. You could also use a paper towel. Sometimes I'll just roll out a couple sheets of paper towel and lay that underneath my painting and then that will absorb my water that's coming off the edge of my paper. So all I'm doing right now is I'm waking up that yellow sky and I'm gonna keep brushing that water completely off the edge of my paper. And the reason I wanna do that is I don't wanna leave any puddles up there, I want it to dry. If this area doesn't dry, we can't go in and color our foliage for our tree. So we need that area to dry first. So what I do is I work one section at a time. So right now I'm working my sky. Now the next section I'm gonna paint is going to be my hills because my hills are exactly the same color scheme. So I'm not gonna paint my tree, I'm just gonna paint my hills. I'm gonna go in here with my fill and wake that up next. Just add a little bit of water and pull it across. Now I'm gonna wait on my tree until my fill side is done because I'm gonna add some brown marker and I don't want my hills to turn brown. So I'm gonna color my hills first. And remember, we don't want to leave puddles, so I'm just going to scoop up that water and brush it all the way off the edge of the paper, brushing it right to the bottom edge. You see what I'm doing? It's just pulling right down to the bottom. I'm working real fast. I'm just gently brushing. This is called the ferrule of the paintbrush, that metal piece right there. You want to be careful that you're not scratching your paper with that part of the paintbrush. All right. Now my background area of warm colors is all done. So once that's done, we want to let that dry for a minute before we start to do our next section. So let it sit for just a minute. You might want to pause the video and let it dry. And then we're going to go back in with our next color. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab my brown marker because I'm gonna work on the trees now. I'm gonna add my brown. So I'm using the side of my marker just to add a layer of brown. I'm gonna use the tip of the marker when I get up to the skinny branches. I kind of wanted that hillside to dry slightly before I started doing my tree. So Van, Mrs., uh, Mr. Van Gogh was staying in a hospital. He wasn't feeling very well. He was getting kind of sick from not taking care of himself and he had some mental issues. And he was staying in a hospital to get better. And while he was in that hospital, he would look out his window and this is what he would see were these beautiful olive trees. And this is what his inspiration was. He painted several paintings of the olive trees. So I'm gonna take my brush now, I'm gonna wake up that brown and I'm gonna Pull that brush all the way up into the branches. You can see I'm just kind of flicking it across the sky. Most of this is going to get covered up once we add our green and blue foliage in later, but just kind of having fun. Scooping up that color. We don't want to leave any puddles. And you'll notice if you were able to do that white crayon, the white crayon kind of resists the paint. You notice how if I paint over it, it just kind of beads up. The brown paint beads up right over the marker. And that's because the wax of the crayon resists the watercolor paint. Now, if you were using acrylic paint or tempera paint, which is the poster paint kind of paint that we have in most of your schools, that doesn't happen. You don't have it beat up like that. It's only the watercolor paint that does that. So I'm just kind of playing up here with my paintbrush using the leftover brown from my marker. And a way to get rid of these big blobs of brown, if you don't wanna leave those puddles of brown, instead of taking your napkin and dabbing it, sometimes that will smear the color. What I do is I take my napkin and it becomes kind of a place where I clean my brush and I'll take my napkin and I kind of dab my brush till it's dry. 
and then I wipe my brush onto the wet surface. You see what I'm doing? And I scoop up that wet puddle, and then I just wipe it onto the napkin. And I can clean my brush with my water, dry it off so it's nice and dry, and I can scoop up any more puddles that I have on my picture. Now that I'm done with my brown paint, seeing if I have any more puddles I need to brush off, I'll rinse out my brush. You're gonna be moving on to cool colors next. So I'm gonna clean my brush, wipe it off, put it back on my napkin. And now we'll get ready to do our cool colors for our picture. So our first cool color that we could work with is blue. So I'm gonna go in with my blue marker and make some dashes of blue on the back side of the mountain. and a few dashes of blue on the front side. Now the front is gonna be a little lighter, so I don't wanna do quite as many. And then I'm gonna add some blue into the stream. And when I'm done with that, I'm gonna take the blue and I'm just gonna go up here and swirl a little blue into my paper. This is going to be the tops of the trees. Now don't worry, it's not going to look like that when we're done because we're going to be layering a bunch of other colors into it. Next, I'm going to go in with green up in the trees and I'm going to swirl in some green. Now you can bring that foliage down as low as you want. I'm not gonna bring mine down too low because I do wanna be able to see the mountain a little bit in my picture. If you wanna add a tiny couple slips of green in your screen, that would look beautiful. If you have a turquoise, you could use that. If you don't have turquoise, you don't have to. If you have a lime green, that would be another pretty color. Maybe your marker set came with that. If it didn't, you don't need to, but you could add yellow if you don't, so if you want to pop in a little bit of yellow in some spots. Now, before you cap your yellow again, it's going to be dirty. You're going to want to wipe it off on your napkin to pull that color out. You see, I'm wiping it on my napkin to clean it before I cap it again. Make sure you always cap your markers nice and tight, too. Now, once our foliage is done, then we're gonna go in with a little bit of crayon just to get some resist going. So I'm gonna go in with some green crayon, doing exactly what we did before. You kind of probably know what we're doing now. I'm also gonna go in with some blue. That's gonna make a pretty turquoise. And the last thing I'm gonna do is get my black. Now I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black to the bottom. I'm just gonna go in and scribble a few little lines of black for a shadow. And then I'm gonna get ready to wake up my green using my paintbrush. So now I'm gonna go in now that my sky is dry and I can wake up the green. Now in the same way that we did the branches and everything else, you'll see that the oil, I'm sorry, it's not oil, it's wax. The wax from the crayon resists the watercolor paint and it makes just such a really neat texture. See how it does that? So since our sky is dry, we're going to be able to actually uh, concentrate when we're painting and we will probably leave a pretty heavy line like that. See how it leaves a more strong line? It doesn't kind of bleed together. If we had left our paper wet and painted our tree while our paper was wet, what would have happened is your green would have started to bleed into where your sky is. And if you like that effect, that's fine. You could do that. So you could just re-wet your paper again and those colors will fade together. So for instance, if I just 
steam my brush so that there's not a bunch of green on it. And all I have to do is wet the paper right here with my brush and that color you'll see will start to fade into the paper there. So you can get rid of kind of that harder line if you don't like that hard line. And once your tree is done, the last part is to wake up your water and your mountainside. So just brushing that color across your stream. And finally, brushing it across your mountain. Well, I hope you had fun today learning a little bit about Vincent Van Gogh. He was an amazing artist. Uh, one thing I thought was really fascinating that I was reading about was um, that you know people just didn't appreciate his artwork when he was alive. They didn't buy his paintings until after he passed away. He only sold one painting while he was alive. And another thing I thought was kind of interesting is that he would bring his canvases and paints out into the fields to paint. And just recently, just a couple years ago, they discovered there was a dead grasshopper stuck in the paint of one of his paintings of the olive trees. So um, I thought that was so fascinating. So not this actual painting, but another one of the olive tree paintings that he did, they found when they were looking with a microscope, they were using the microscope to uh, uh, clean the painting and they discovered there was a bug and it was a grasshopper stuck underneath the paint and that bug had been in there for 127 years. All right, hope you had fun learning about Vincent Van Gogh and painting our olive tree picture today. Oh, actually, I think it's kind of neat that we didn't even use paint. We just used markers, water-based markers, and crayon as a resist. I will see you for our next lesson. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.